Good morning friends, it's Langsor and today I want to give you a guide on how to make a new build yourself in Diablo 4. Because I know it's fancy and cool to just pick up OP builds from other people, like Rex for example, but maybe you want to try something yourself and play around a little bit. Now I did this video before in Last Epoch, in Last Epoch we do have way more possibilities to make builds, but it still applies mostly exactly the same in Diablo 4, I realized. So let's just go over the points we have and then um, I'll yeah, show you how to do it. One thing I have to mention though, I'm a sorcerer main, right? You guys know this. And you will notice with the sorcerer, you pretty much have to play as it is right now anyway, every build the same. You always have to use all elemental damage types like fire, frost and lightning to get the buffs from the aspects, to get the bonus from the Tarashas, which is still the strongest, or from the Glyph, the Elementalist Glyph, which is still super powerful. So, for the Sorcerer, this is a little bit annoying right now. We pretty much play the same builds all the time, but um, there is still var um, variability in it. And I mean, I make a bunch of builds, but you, you always have sort of the same skills on your, on your body on there, but anyway. So this also brings me to the first point you want to do. You want to focus on one damage type. Even though I just said you always have to use all of them, you still want to focus your items and your skills on that one damage type. Let's for example say this one. The build we're running right here is a Blizzard build. That's also why we're blue, right? So while the Sorcerer is a little bit different in this because you still have to go for all the damage, you want to keep the main focus on that one damage type you're going for. Like if you're doing an incinerate build, you obviously don't want to focus on frost damage on your items. I mean, I guess it makes sense, but it has to be said. That's sort of the first step. You want to focus all the damage on that one thing. There are exceptions. Sometimes, for example, with the Hydra build I had, Hydra is fire damage, but I was using the frozen orb to conjure the Hydras. So I put a little bit of damage also into frost or even lightning because the lightning spear conjuration is still very strong. So you also, this is part of the first point, you have to look a little bit in the current meta, what is the strongest build, which right now is the Lightning Spear Sorcerer. So you gotta realize, okay, I kinda have to play, this is a Diablo Sin by the way, I kinda have to play the Lightning Spear anyway if I wanna go into higher pits or higher content, because it's the strongest right now. Because Blizzard and Diablo for that matter have a habit of having one or maybe two to three builds for one character that are the strongest, that sort of revolve around the same, and everything else kind of sucks. So you, if you want to play different builds, you kind of have to use mechanics or techniques of the strongest build. This is why when I was playing the Hydra Sorcerer, uh, I was still using Lightning Spear, because it's just too strong. You want to focus on one damage type mostly, but understand where the meta is and what is currently the strongest in that season or in that patch or whatever because otherwise your build just won't do much and the reason for this is very simple it's this very item tarasha's iridescent loop it's sometimes tough for me to say that and it says down here for each type of elemental damage you deal gain up to 20 percent increased damage for four seconds up to six uh, up to 80 percent actually and dealing elemental damage refreshes all bonuses so that means if you switch your damage types between fire um, lightning and cold all the time, you gain up to 80% more damage generally overall with this Tarasha's loop. And you also have the same thing in the glyphs. Uh, let me check, I don't know where it is. It's called the Elementalist. I think I have it. There it is. Dealing fire, cold, or lightning damage to an enemy increase all damage you deal to them by 5% for 10 seconds, stacking once per element. That means 15% in this case. So that's even more damage on that. So you get up to 100% damage, which is then, of course, up to twice the damage if you do switch all your elemental damage. So you kind of have to play this because it's just so strong, you cannot really <laughs> play something else. I tried it, I tried to play a Hydra that just had fire damage and nothing else. As soon as I switched with the Tarashas or with the Glyphs and switching damage types, the build was just much stronger. That's just where the Sorcerer is right now. Um, I hope they change that, but that's where it is. So what I, the next step is, is there a specific item you want to build around? And this is what I've done a lot. This is much stronger in Last Epoch, but it's also pretty strong here in um, Diablo 4. 
let's for example say the classic one is if you go to our stash everyone is doing this right now that is zip, where is it this one the fractured winter glass because very simple casting a frozen orb has a 65 percent chance to spawn a random conjuration and your conjurations have up to a 90 percent chance to launch a frozen orb at nearby enemies so you have this loop where you cast your frozen orbs they cast the conjuration and the conjurations also can cast frozen orbs etc etc and especially also with the hydra this was insane so the hydras were shooting frozen orbs at enemies and these frozen orbs were conjuring lightning spears or the ice blades so i also had the automatically growing the switching damage types by itself so if you have an item you see like this and like okay damn this is so good then you want to build your build around that or another one for example is obviously the actual conduit Chain lightning alternates between orbiting you and seeking up to three enemies. Now, obviously, you have this item. You want to build a chain lightning build. Staff of Endless Rage, you have that. Fireball projectile speed. Chance for fireball to cast twice. And every third cast of fireball launches two additional projectiles. So, obviously, you're going to go with a fireball build. You have the Staff of Lamb, Ezin. Ezin? Ezin? I don't even know. Charged bolts have a chance to be attracted to enemies and last 300% longer. And they have a chance to be cast twice. So I also want to try a charged bolts build, which probably sucks, let's be honest. But we're going to try that. So this is sort of how I approach this. I have an item, a unique in this case, usually, because I have these fancy things. And I'm like, okay, we maybe we can build something around that. Then what you want to look into is you want to go to tempering, to our blacksmith over here. You throw an item in, tempering. Actually, um, you don't throw an item in, and you just look at what is available for tempering affixes. For example, it was very obvious when I was doing... There it is. When I was doing the Hydra build, see, casted Hydras have one to two heads. So this is how I got one Hydra conjuration to have 12 to 14 heads, where they all do damage. So I was like, okay, this tempering affix is actually insane. So let's build around that. I want to have a Hydra build that has all this. Um, there is, uh, and you, so you go through these temperings and look, okay, there's something that is absolutely crazy. Chain lightning to cast twice. Maybe that helps. Ball lightning cast twice. Maybe we can do something with that. Medial size, fireball size, or fireball to cast twice. So obviously, you throw in the fireball into your fireball build. Fireball right now is a meta build, so this is obvious. You can also look into the defensive ones. Is there anything... For example, um, this buffs cold front. Can we do something with a super buffed cold front? I think warmth is a lucky hit one. So is the, if there, for example, is a, a skill that gives you lucky hit percentage. And if you put more skills into this, this goes up. So for example, you can get this to 50% lucky hit that gives you something in your build. So you look at this a little bit and play around with it. Is there something in the tempering affixes that really helps you to make a build around it? Like here, Crippling Flames. I think that was it, actually. And you will realize this is a lot of testing, right? You only want to do this if you like testing things, okay? If you just want to play the game, just take a build guide from me or from anyone else, you're good. If you want to test things and come up with the new crazy build, this is the way you go. The other very obvious thing is, of course, are there aspects, right? The orange ones down there that help my build for example the blizzard build actually only works because of this very imprint without that the build does no damage whatsoever because blizzard itself doesn't do any damage it's like irrelevant it's pointless but there it says when you cast blizzard it will periodically spawn exploding ice spikes that deal 2000 damage and your ice spikes chill enemies there's also another one i think it was this um ice spikes deal increased damage to frozen enemies and ice bikes have 50% increased explosion radius. So you want to focus on these. So look into the aspects. You can do this if you hit, um, was it C, it was U? Right, you go to U and then collections and the codex of power. This is where you see all your aspects. And now you can also search by, I mean, it's already by the sorcerer or your class. I can search, for example, for blizzard. Is there anything for that? Then we have the gl a glacial aspect and the snow gods aspect. And now you already have three things. You have an item that buffs a specific or goes into a specific direction. Then you have tempering affixes and you have aspects. And this, if you have these three, you're already on a good path to find the build. 
Next step, sort of coming from that is obviously other aspects that support the build you have. For example, with this build, especially, I mean, this is pretty much, uh, this is a supporting aspect we always have, but we want to be, especially with the um, incinerate build I played, you always need to have barrier active because you're standing still and channeling, right? So people are going to attack you all the time. So you need a lot of barrier. And the barrier in this case also increases your damage. So this is a great aspect, supporting your build. So you also want to look into supporting things. Like here, you take less damage from crowd controlled or vulnerable enemies. We do a lot of crowd control with this build because we freeze them a lot, we shield them a lot. And they get vulnerable as well. Or immobilizing or even stunning is in the lucky in the tempering. So this helps us to survive longer. Because with the blizzard, it needs a lot of ramp to actually do damage. So we all stand around in damage a lot. So you want to look into aspects that also support your damage aspects or your existing build right now. And only then, this is how I do it, and only then do I actually look into the skill tree. Because uh, how Diablo does its skill trees, you pretty much have to pick almost the same skills anytime anyway, especially defensive ones with the sorcerer. But you want to look, are there any skills or especially passives in the skill tree that help me with that build? For example, in uh, when I was doing the Hydra build, it was very obvious. Conjuration Mastery, right? You want to get this up as much as possible. But you also had, this was what I did with the Hydra. Um, what was it? This one, Devouring Blaze. The 20% increased crit damage against burning enemies if they are crowd controlled. This bonus is increased to 20. So, the Hydra supplied burning to enemies, but they did the main damage with crit. So the Devouring Blaze was an insanely strong passive for me to take. A passive I always take, no matter if I run frost or not, is the icy wheel. Your barriers have 24% increased duration. This is a classic. But you want to look, what can actually support my build? A classic one most people also take is the ice blades, because they apply vulnerable to enemies, right? And then ice blades cooldown is reduced by 0.5 seconds each time it hits a vulnerable enemy. But the key thing is this. 20% of ice enhanced ice blades cooldown reduction is applied to your other skills. That means you summon a bunch of ice blades, they hit enemies, the cooldown is reduced, but that cooldown reduction also goes to all your other skills. You do this to have your barrier up all the time, especially for example with the incinerate build or with the blizzard build. But this way you have your barriers available all the time. So this is a nice supporting skill here. Obviously you want to have the main skill. Sadly, I mean this has 5 now because I have the Shaco, like the Harlequin Crest. But um, this is at 1. Sadly, at this point in Diablo 4, there is still no point to putting more points into the main skill itself. It just gives me more damage, but not really that much. I wish this would like reduce cooldown or reduce mana cost or increase luck hit chance or something like that. Instead of just the plain damage, because you usually get more damage from items or the paragon. So, yeah, that, that's a bit annoying. Anyway, you want to have always these. You gotta look at what you want from that. What supports your build the most? More damage to Frozen? Cool. Duration increased by 4 seconds. Yes, please, because the longer the blizzard lasts, the more ice spikes it actually creates. This is one. You gain one mana region for every 20 max of mana. It's not bad, but not really necessary. We look at mana in other ways. So you wanna just look at what supports your build. For example, the ice armor, you always wanna go for the shimmering ice armor. Um, you reduce the cooldown, so that just means you have it available a lot. And you also increase mana regen. You always need these if you have your eyes armor, especially with the sorcerer. Once you're done with this, the next step is, I sort of in the same step, you look into the skills and then you also look at the enchantment effects. This, for example, why many people have the firebolt always in the enchantment or the sorcerer, even though you never actually use the firebolt. But the enchantment effect is direct damage from skills, any skill, applies up to an additional 8,000 burning damage over 8 seconds. And it's not so much the burning damage, which is cool, it is that the enemy then will be burning by any skill you cast on them. Because, as you know, as it says down here by the Devouring Blaze, that increases your crit strike damage against them. So this enchantment, as you can tell here, is just very, very powerful in most sorcerer builds, because crit damage is usually how you scale late game. Because there, sadly there isn't a really good burning build in Diablo 4. Because there's no burning affixes. 
That's another thing where you realize, for example, that a build just doesn't work. I wanted to do a... If you know Path of Exile, there is the Righteous Fire build, where you just stand around and you have an aura of fire and it does damage over time, fire damage over time, and it just burns everyone. You cannot do this in Diablo 4, because there is no affixes, tempering affixes or aspects that buff your burning damage. So it's just sitting on that shitty burning damage that doesn't do much. And that sucks. But that's what it is. Then of course, while you're at it with the skills, you want to look into defensive, uh, not defensive, supporting skills. I mean, with the sorcerer, this is simple, right? You always have your barriers. That's what you need to do. You pretty much on all builds, uh, that's it, by the way. You pretty much on all builds have the teleport, you have the ice armor, and you have the flame shield. That's pretty much what you always do. I never see actually someone use the frost nova. Rarely. It's not bad, but yeah. So... These you pretty much always have, right? Because the sorcerer otherwise dies pretty fast. But maybe, as I said, there's, for example, the ice blades. With this, to reduce cooldowns, that helps you build to be available a lot more. Or the lightning spear. For example, casting lightning spear with spawns additional lightning spear and increases their crit chance by 15%. For example. This could, could for example, help you. Or ultimates still suck in this game, sadly, except for the unstable currents if you play a lightning build, but the other ones are just bad, sadly. And especially going forward with the expansion that is coming with the mercenaries, I hope there is some more supporting skills for builds we can play around with. So that's sort of the next step you want to look into. Then, of course, very important, the Paragon board. Now, I should make a video about the Paragon board in and of itself, because that's a lot to talk about. But the main idea is you want to look into the glyphs. That's what you want to look into if you have your build running. You go over here into your glyphs on the left. I know there's my face in the way, but you know where it is. And then you just look at what, what is available. Ignore the blue ones, they suck anyway. You just go for the yellow ones, the rare ones. And you want to look, okay. You want to always look at the additional bonus. Crit strike increase all damage the enemy takes from you up to 12%. That's great, because we scale our late game with crit damage. Nice, we want to have this. And we have Unleash. Spending 50 mana, you deal 8% increased damage and gain increased mana region. Nice, that helps us a lot. So, this is going to take a while to look through these, and you might want to play around with it also in your play, or in your gameplay, to see what works. Because sometimes you have this in your mind, but it just doesn't really pull, so you have to play around with it. And sometimes there's also the regular bonus, for example this one, right? For every 5 intelligence within range, conjuration skills gain 15% increased damage. So with this one, you actually want to throw it in and want to pick up as many int ones around it as possible to get this up to like 200%... Oh wait, uh, where is it? 200% more damage. I did this for the Hydros, for example. There was also... Or this one. Yeah, this was the insane one. Invocation. For each... Dexterity purchased within range, your conjuration skills gain 22% crit strike damage. I got this up to like 200% more crit damage. That was insane. So you want to look also into the regular bonus at the top, but the additional bonus at the bottom is usually the strong one, but you have to meet the requirements for that. So look into this when you build your Paragon board. But you want to look at the glyphs. A lot of them focus on specific build types. Or build styles like you have the pyromaniac you have winter somewhere and um, you have defensive ones and you don't want to miss out on defensive ones especially with the uh, sorcerer 15 percent damage reduction while you have an active barrier that's very useful for many sorcerers so you want to look into a balance still diablo 4 is focused mostly on damage so offensive usually wins just kill the enemies faster than you get it's usually how it works in d4 so usually you are good with that but um, you, you might want to have at least like one glyph that does some defense stuff. When it comes to the boards, if you look at this Blizzard build, for example, I didn't care about most of these notes. See, most of the legendary notes I did not give a damn about because the glyphs are at this point just better. So just pick any boards. I have like eight boards, which doesn't actually work going forward anymore. In patch 2.0, this won't work. There's a maximum of five, but for now it works. And you just get through it fast to get to the glyphs and throw them in because that in this case helped more other builds you just go with four balls and actually pick up the legendary nodes but these are okay ish 
but not crazy. Um, I think, uh, in my experience, the glyphs are usually stronger than the legendary notes, except for some rare cases. Um, like this one, nobody ever uses that one. But, and I have this one for example, yeah, bonus damage to vulnerable, because that goes up to 60% more damage to vulnerable enemies, which I do a lot. So in this case, it makes sense, but not always, right? And, um, and the other ones, it's better to just go for the glyphs. That depends a lot on the build, play around with it, some notes are good, some are not so good. That is up to you. Then, once you have this, you, you have your first build, but this is uh, sort of the pre-alpha beta version, right? The, this is still a testing phase. Now what you do is you go into the pit, right? You go to Karigar. Karigar, I don't even know how it's pronounced. Up here. Karigar. Because there is the pit. And in the pit you test how the build actually does. This is now your testing ground. Because the great thing about the pit is, you can pretty easily and nicely just choose the difficulty level, right? I would say you start with 61, where, it's where you get the highest um, stuff you want. If you can't do 61 with a non-masterworked build, like you don't need the masterworks um, when you begin with your build, but you should at least have them all tempered, they should uh, have all the gems in there and um, all the aspects you need. And then you try a pit 61 right now. In the future, this will be different, you know, because this is all be changed. But right now, this is sort of the idea. Sort of in the early middle, because the pit goes to 200. So this is 61 is sort of in the first, nah, not even quarter, the first two quarters. If you can do this just fine, then you can think of spending master working materials. I wouldn't do it before that because you want to have a first idea of what the build actually does. You might also realize, okay, I need sustain. I don't have enough mana. You can, for example, also do this with elixirs, right? There's an elixir that helps you with resource generation. So maybe you don't need to change your items. You just need to keep the elixir active every time you play. That's what I do, for example, with this build. Um, so also check the elixirs, which one could actually help you. Or for example, also crit chance is great or lucky hit chance helps a lot if you build revolves around that and then you go to master working once you are um, satisfied with what you have i mean the harlequin crest is sort of a staple in the sorcerer anyway because you need the damage reduction and the armor and the maximum life that's just so powerful but if you don't have it um this one you want to have a 12 12 master break harlequin crest anyway and a better one with stars maybe i don't have that but there we are and then I think the key thing is once you notice, okay, I need more health, I need more sustain, this doesn't actually do the damage I want, maybe I need to focus more on cold damage with the frozen orb or with the hydro fire damage or whatever, maybe I need more crit damage, you play around with this. And I personally, right now as it stands, think a build is really viable when you can do a pit tier, pit tier 100 or at least like 90. If you can do 90 to 100, you can do most bosses just fine, right? Or you can do most most of the content just fine. Even the uber bosses, you can do them alone, right? No problem. So this is sort of your measurement. If you can't go to tier 100, I wouldn't say it's a good build. But again, you need you need you really need master working to even get there. So once you've once you've focused on the items you want to have, you want to use, and you say, okay, this is all fine now. You want to masterwork them to really fire up the damage. The masterworking actually does a lot of damage for the late game. It gives the sort of extra boost. You might be unlucky like I was here in this case. I wanted chance for ice spikes to explode twice or the ice spike damage. And I got the crit chance twice. If you want masterworking to hit one FX twice, it never happens. If you don't want it, it happens. So there we are. So you might have to spend a lot of time actually. And this is something I actually don't like so much about Diablo 4. Finding a good build takes a lot of time. Last Epoch, this is way faster. Like, it's like a fifth of the time in Last Epoch you need to find a good build than you do in Diablo. Because you have to master work to really know if it's going to be a great build late game. And you have to hit good rolls with master working as well, or tempering. Now, this will become a little bit easier going forward because the changes they introduce are nicer or very nice make it easier but as it stands right now not a fan it takes really very long to find good builds you, you need to spend a lot of hours playing to to get there but if this is your kind of style if you want to make your own builds you want to find 
new fancy builds nobody has come up with yet, then that's how you do it. That's how I do it and that's uh, how I would recommend you do it. Maybe you have a better idea if you have an entirely different approach to builds and making builds in Diablo 4, let me know in the comments below. I'm very curious how you guys do it. Until then, I hope this helped you. If any more questions, post them below. And I will see you guys in the next video.